Ham the chimpanzee was very special. He was the first hominid in space, the trailblazer which set the course for years of human space exploration. So, what was his story? Did he survive the pioneering journey, a voyage that took him further from Earth than anyone had ever gone before? I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum. And together we will recount the story of Ham the Chimp and the legacy his mission left behind. Project Mercury came about as the result of the space race between the USSR and the USA. Both countries were furiously trying to be the first ones in space, which would be a display of their military powers against the other rival nation. This is the program from which NASA was founded. Before Project Mercury, in the early 1950s, space-related endeavors were performed by the US military. Initially, they sent mice and monkeys into space to test the effects of huge g-forces and weightlessness that comes with rocket travel. Rockets were very basic to begin with. This rocket, called the Aero B3, is pretty small by today's standards at only 8 meters tall, and in this test, it reached altitudes of only 60 kilometers. Experiencing 4 Gs on takeoff and weightlessness for a few minutes, the animals inside the rocket appeared perplexed but survived the trip with no apparent harm or after effects. Monkeys were specifically chosen during this time because they closely match the physiology of humans and it was thought that whatever happens to them would be a good indicator of what would happen to a human in space. One of the last space missions of the US military was in 1959 where they successfully launched two monkeys, Miss Abel and Miss Baker, into space at an altitude of 570 kilometers on board a Jupiter rocket. On this trip, they withstood a maximum of 38 Gs and reached a top speed of 16,000 km per hour. The mission was a success, the nose cone was successfully recovered, but unfortunately Abel died a few days after the flight after having surgery performed on her unsuccessfully. Miss Baker, on the other hand, lived a while after the flight and was able to breed as part of tests on her reproductive organs, and was honored for her contributions to scientific discovery. Even today, bananas can be found on her grave in respect to her accomplishments. A few months after this flight, NASA with Project Mercury took over the goal of bringing humans to space. With a new set of rockets, including the Mercury Atlas and the Mercury Redstone. America was under pressure by the Russians, who had already been the first ones to get a satellite into orbit in 1957 the famous Sputnik 1 and its beeping radio transmission. After a couple of years of testing the Mercury rockets, in 1961, NASA felt like they were ready to send a hominid, or a great ape, into space aboard a Mercury Redstone rocket. This rocket is considerably bigger than the Aero B. At 25 meters long, but still much smaller than rockets of today. It was, however, big enough to fit a human in the capsule at the top. The Mercury Redstone rocket was only capable of suborbital flight though, meaning it would reach space but not be able to stay in orbit. The choice of candidate was important for this mission, as in this case the chimp would not just be a passenger, but would be required to perform tasks while in space. The ability to perform tasks while in the capsule would pave the way for human astronauts in the future, meaning human astronauts would not have to totally rely on automation should the rocket lose contact with the command base for whatever reason. From a pool of 40 chimpanzee candidates, Ham was eventually chosen through a series of selection processes, including selecting the healthiest chimp and the one that followed commands best. He was also picked because he was a particularly happy chimp with a good temperament. At this point, 
Ham was only known as number 65, as the US didn't want the bad press associated from a named chimp dying should the mission fail. Ham was trained to pull a lever within 5 seconds of seeing a blue light. If he did, he would be rewarded with a banana pellet. Should he not pull the lever, he would receive a mild electric shock in his foot. After months of preparations, Ham was ready for the flight. They inserted him into a mini capsule at first as a form of a spacesuit for the chimp. This mini capsule would control pressure, oxygen, and temperature for Ham, and he had sensors measuring his vital signs, which communicated this information back to ground control on Earth thanks to the rocket's antenna. His arms were free in order to perform the commands he was given during the flight, and he had a window so he could see what was going on. The time for the launch approached, with many scientists and engineers doing last-minute checks to ensure everything went well with the flight. Ham was then placed into the main capsule of the Mercury Redstone rocket for launch. This main capsule is also pressurized, as this is where the human astronaut would sit should this mission go to plan. As the morning came, the rocket launched. After only one minute into the flight, computers on board the rocket communicated back to command that the flight plan angle was already one degree too high and rising. This steeper angle meant the rocket accelerated a lot faster than planned, with predicted g-forces reaching 17 g's in the capsule for poor Ham. After just two and a half minutes, the liquid oxygen for the rocket was depleted which sent a mayday signal to recovery forces. The rocket was spinning wildly, was a lot higher than expected, and had achieved higher speeds than anticipated. As a response to this, an abort signal was sent, and the capsule was ejected early from the rocket at an altitude of 250 kilometers instead of 185. This early abort meant that there were no retro rockets to slow the descent, and the capsule containing Ham hurtled back towards Earth. If this wasn't enough, sensors reported that the main capsule was losing pressure fast, which later turned out to be a faulty air inlet snorkel valve, a pin of which came loose after vibrations from the launch. At this point though, Ham was blissfully unaware of all these problems going on around him. His mini capsule meant that he was unaffected by the falling pressure in the main capsule. He was happily playing the lever and lights game, only performing marginally slower than his results on Earth. As the capsule began its re-entry back into Earth's atmosphere, Ham was again subjected to higher g-forces than expected, this time 14 g's. Because there were no retro rockets fired to slow descent, the capsule had overshot its expected landing area by 100 kilometers. The capsule's parachutes were pulled, and airbags around the base were inflated to cushion the fall and help with floating on the water's surface. Upon impact, colored dye was released into the sea to help aid recovery. It wasn't until 12 excruciating minutes had passed before the capsule sent its first recovery signal. 27 minutes after landing, a search plane finally spotted the capsule floating in the Atlantic. The US Navy rescue helicopters were sent from the nearest ship to pick up the capsule, which by the time they got there had taken in water and was quickly submerging. The impact from the landing had popped off the heat shield at the base, puncturing holes into the base of the capsule. The airbags were heavily worn, and that leaky snorkel valve from earlier was also allowing water in. By the time the capsule was rescued, it had taken in roughly 360 kilograms of water on board. After a three-hour recovery, the capsule and its precious cargo were airlifted to the nearest Navy ship when NASA scientists waited on hand to see the fate of Ham. A lot had gone wrong with this mission, but was he still alive after all of that? And if so, what state was he in? 
Scientists and Navy personnel worked quickly to get him out. The cover came off and Ham was... Fine. He had done it, and he was safe and well, still his happy self. Almost as if nothing noteworthy had happened. He survived everything relatively unscathed. His only injury was a bruised nose. Ham retired from spacefaring shortly thereafter and lived a good 20 years after his voyage in a number of zoos. He passed away in 1983. His skeleton was sent to the US National Museum of Health and Medicine. His other remains buried and honored by the International Space Hall of Fame in New Mexico. Because of the success of this mission, a few months later, the US successfully sent Alan Shepard into space on board another Mercury Redstone rocket, called Freedom 7. However, the US didn't win this space race. The Soviets successfully orbited around the Earth with a human on board called Yuri Gagarin aboard Vostok 1. But the legacy of this mission can still be felt today, with humans now on board the International Space Station, and even now with a space race to get humans on the moon a second time. So there we have it, the story of the chimp who beat all humans to space. Ham. <laughs>